world where hearts often felt adrift, Alex, a young seeker, was haunted by a sense of disconnection. Amidst the noise of everyday life, she yearned for something more profound. The legend of harmony, a hidden city where the true essence of love was understood, ignited a spark within Alex. This was not just a journey for answers, but a quest for a connection that ran deeper than any she had known. Compelled by this yearning, Alex embarked on a quest to find harmony. The path was laden with challenges, each a mirror to the barriers within Alex's own heart. The journey was a voyage into the depths of her soul. Alex's journey led her to the Forest of Echoes, a place shrouded in mystery and whispers. Here, the trees themselves seemed to speak, their leaves rustling with secrets of the past. It was in this enchanting forest that Alex first encountered Luna, the guardian of the language of words of affirmation. Luna, with her ethereal presence, seemed to float rather than walk. Her voice, soft yet clear, resonated with a truth that touched the soul. She spoke to Alex of the power of words, how they could uplift or wound, heal or harm. Luna explained that words of affirmation were not mere compliments, but expressions of deep appreciation and recognition of another's value. As they walked through the forest, Luna shared stories of how words had mended broken spirits and sparked love in the coldest of hearts. She spoke of lovers who whispered sweet nothings, of friends who voiced their admiration, and of strangers who offered words of encouragement at just the right moment. Luna guided Alex to a clearing where the moonlight shone brightly, casting a silver glow on everything it touched. Here, she asked Alex to practice this language of love. She encouraged her to speak words of affirmation to the trees, to the stars, to themselves. As Alex did so, she felt a warmth spreading within her, a sense of being seen and understood. But Luna's teachings were not just about speaking words of affirmation, they were also about receiving them. She taught Alex to listen, to truly hear the words spoken to her, and to let them sink in, to believe in their truth. As the night deepened, Luna's final lesson was about the sincerity behind the words. Words of affirmation must be genuine, she said. They must come from a place of authenticity and love. Only then can they truly touch another's heart. With these lessons etched in her heart, Alex knew that her journey in the Forest of Echoes was complete. But Luna's teachings were just the beginning. There were more languages of love to learn, more secrets to uncover on the path to harmony. Leaving the Forest of Echoes behind, Alex ventured into the Grove of Service. This tranquil place was tended by soul, a being whose every action was a testament to love. Soul's hands were always busy, yet his presence was calm and reassuring. In this grove, the language of love was not spoken, but shown through actions. Soul introduced Alex to the concept of acts of service, explaining that for some, love is best expressed through helpful deeds. These acts, big or small, are done with the intention of easing another's burden or bringing joy to their day. It's not about grand gestures, but the thoughtfulness behind each act. As they walked through the grove, Sol pointed out the various ways he cared for the land. He showed Alex how tending to the smallest plant or repairing a broken path was an act of love for the grove and its inhabitants. Each action, Sol explained, was a silent declaration of his commitment and care. Sol then guided Alex in practicing this language. Alex helped repair a small bridge, 
watered young saplings and cleared a path of fallen leaves. With each task, Alex began to understand the satisfaction and joy that came from acts of service. She realized that these actions, though seemingly mundane, were powerful expressions of love. But Soul's lessons went deeper. He taught Alex that acts of service were not just about doing things for others, but also about recognizing and appreciating when others do things for them. It was about seeing the love in everyday actions, from a friend preparing a meal to a stranger offering a helping hand. As the day turned to evening, Sol shared one last insight. Acts of service, he said, should be given freely, without expectation of reward or recognition. The true joy lies in the giving, in knowing that you've made someone's life a little easier, a little brighter. With a heart full of gratitude, Alex bid farewell to Soul and the Grove of Service. She carried with her the understanding that love could be a quiet, selfless act, a language spoken through deeds of kindness and care. Leaving the Grove of Service, Alex's journey led her to the shores of the Lake of Gifts. Here, the Guardian Zephyr awaited, a sprite filled with boundless joy and laughter. Zephyr's eyes sparkled with mischief, and she greeted Alex with a playful twirl. In the language of love, this place was dedicated to giving and receiving gifts. Zephyr explained that some souls express their love through tokens, be they simple or elaborate. Gifts symbolize thought and effort, conveying love and appreciation in tangible form. Zephyr's collection of colorful trinkets lined the shore. They told stories of love exchanged, of moments celebrated, and of connections strengthened. Each gift was a chapter in the grand story of love. With a mischievous grin, Zephyr handed Alex a small, intricately carved figurine. It was a gift, a token of their encounter. Zephyr encouraged Alex to examine it closely, to feel the craftsmanship and the intention behind the gift. Alex held the figurine, understanding that it was more than an object. It was a gesture, a piece of someone's heart. Zephyr explained that the act of giving a gift was an act of love, a way of saying, I cherish you, and I want to bring joy to your life. But the lake of gifts wasn't just about giving. Zephyr emphasized the importance of receiving gifts graciously. It was a way of honoring the love and effort someone put into selecting or creating a gift. Zephyr taught Alex that receiving a gift was a way of saying, I accept your love, and I appreciate your thoughtfulness. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Painting the sky in hues of orange and purple, Zephyr led Alex to a quiet spot by the lake. They sat together, watching the ripples on the water and sharing stories of gifts given and received. Zephyr's laughter echoed across the lake, filling the evening air with a sense of pure joy. Before parting ways, Zephyr offered one last piece of wisdom. Remember, she said, gifts need not be extravagant. It's the love behind the gift that matters most. A simple flower, a handwritten note, a shared moment, these can be the most precious tokens of love. With gratitude for this lesson, Alex left the lake of gifts, the carved figurine a cherished reminder of the beauty of giving and receiving in the language of love. Having learned the importance of words, actions, and gifts as languages of love, Alex ventured further on her journey. She found herself at the entrance of the Cavern of Time, a place where moments were measured not in minutes, but in heartbeats. Here, the Guardian Terra awaited, a figure of graceful strength. 
Terra moved with deliberate and unhurried motions, as if in harmony with the very rhythm of the universe. Alex approached Terra, feeling the presence of time itself. In the language of love, this realm was dedicated to quality time. Terra explained that some souls expressed their affection through undivided attention and shared moments. Terra led Alex deeper into the cavern, where the walls glistened with the reflections of countless shared moments. In this place, time was not a commodity but a gift, freely given to those who cherished it. Alex learned that quality time wasn't about the quantity of minutes spent, but the quality of presence offered. It was the act of being fully engaged, of listening with the heart, and of sharing undistracted moments of connection. As Terra guided Alex through the cavern's winding paths, they came across a serene garden bathed in soft, golden light. In this garden, individuals sat together in quiet conversation, their eyes reflecting the depths of their connection. Tara invited Alex to sit in the garden, offering a seat next to a wise elder who shared tales of a life well lived. The elder spoke of moments spent with loved ones, of laughter under starlit skies, and of the profound beauty of a shared silence. Alex listened intently, understanding that quality time was not limited to grand adventures, but found in the everyday moments. It was a shared cup of tea, a walk in the rain, or a quiet evening by the fire. It was about being present, fully engaged in the experience of togetherness. As the hours passed, Tara guided Alex to a tranquil pool within the cavern. The pool's surface shimmered with reflections of countless moments. Terra encouraged Alex to gaze into the pool, where they saw their own reflection alongside the reflections of those they loved. In that moment, Alex realized the depth of quality time. It wasn't just about being present for others, but also for oneself. It was about self-care self-reflection, and self-love. Tara taught Alex that by nourishing her own soul, she would have even more to offer in her connections with others. With gratitude for this profound lesson, Alex left the cavern of time, her heart filled with the understanding that the most precious gift one could give or receive was the gift of time and presence. Alex's journey through the realms of love continued as she followed Terra out of the cavern of time and into the open expanse of the mystical world. Her path led her to a breathtaking place known as the Meadow of Embrace. The air in the meadow was filled with a sense of warmth and comfort. Gentle breezes carried the scent of blooming flowers and the very ground seemed to radiate with a soothing energy. It was here that Alex would learn the final language of love, physical touch. In the distance, Alex spotted a figure with an aura of nurturing kindness. This was Aura, the guardian of the Meadow of Embrace. Aura welcomed Alex with a serene smile and an outstretched hand. Physical touch, as Aura explained, was a language that transcended words. It was the language of comfort, presence, and connection. It encompassed everything from a reassuring hug to a tender caress of the hand. Alex watched as Aura moved gracefully through the meadow, her touch bringing comfort to the beings that inhabited this realm. Here, every touch was a testament to love and compassion. Aura guided Alex through the meadow, inviting her to experience the power of physical touch firsthand. They approached a small gathering of individuals, each engaged in a different form of tactile connection. One pair sat by a tranquil stream, their feet immersed in the cool water as they shared stories of their lives. Another group engaged in a dance, 
their bodies moving in perfect harmony to the rhythm of nature. A third pair simply sat together beneath a tree, their shoulders touching as they gazed at the horizon. Alex understood that physical touch was about more than just physical contact. It was about emotional connection. It was the power of a hand on a shoulder during a moment of vulnerability, the warmth of an embrace that conveyed safety and acceptance, and the simple act of holding someone's hand to let them know they were not alone. As Aura led Alex further into the meadow, they came across a tranquil pond. Beside the pond, individuals floated on the surface of the water, their bodies gently supported by its embrace. It was a scene of serenity and surrender. Aura encouraged Alex to join in this act of floating, to experience the profound connection that could be achieved through physical touch. As Alex floated on the surface of the pond, she felt a sense of weightlessness and security, as if the universe itself was cradling her. In this moment, Alex realized that physical touch was not limited to the external world. It was also an inner language, a way of nurturing and soothing one's own soul. The gentle touch of self-compassion and self-care was just as essential as the touch shared with others. With gratitude for the lessons learned in the meadow of embrace, Alex left the realm of physical touch with a profound understanding of its significance. She knew that this language of love was a bridge that connected hearts and souls, transcending words and transcending time. With each step of her journey, Alex had delved deeper into the languages of love. She had experienced the power of words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Yet, she knew that there was still a journey within herself, a path to uncovering her own barriers to love and connection. As she left the meadow of embrace behind, Alex felt a sense of introspection settling upon her. She understood that the final leg of her quest would lead her to confront her own inner obstacles, the fears and insecurities that had held her back from meaningful connections in the past. The path ahead was a narrow one, winding through a dense forest known as the Forest of Fears. Tall trees with twisted branches cast eerie shadows, and the air was thick with the whispers of self-doubt and uncertainty. Alex took a deep breath and ventured forth, guided by an inner resolve to face the demons that lurked within. The first challenge that emerged from the shadows was the fear of rejection. It took the form of a daunting creature, its appearance shifting to mirror the insecurities that had haunted Alex for so long. It whispered cruel words, reminding her of past rejections and betrayals. But Alex was not the same person she had been at the beginning of her journey. She had learned to speak the languages of love, and words of affirmation flowed from her lips. With each word, the creature's form began to shift, its sharp edges softening until it dissolved into a gentle breeze that carried away the remnants of the fear of rejection. The journey through the forest of fears continued, and Alex encountered the fear of vulnerability. This obstacle manifested as a maze of thorny vines, each thorn representing a fear of exposing one's true self to others. It seemed impenetrable, but Alex remembered the lessons of acts of service and quality time. With each thorn she removed, she revealed a pathway towards vulnerability. It was not about tearing down walls, but carefully dismantling them, one thorn at a time. As the last thorn fell, the vines transformed into a lush garden of acceptance and authenticity. Finally, 
Alex faced the fear of unworthiness. This formidable foe loomed as a vast chasm, seemingly insurmountable. It whispered doubts about Alex's value and worthiness of love. But Alex had learned the language of receiving gifts, and she reached into her heart to find the most precious gift of all, self-love. She tossed this gift into the chasm, and as it fell, the chasm closed, forming a bridge of self-acceptance that spanned the gap. With these inner obstacles overcome, Alex felt a profound transformation taking place within. She understood that love and connection were not just external experiences, but internal ones. By mastering the languages of love and facing her inner demons, she had discovered a deeper truth about herself and the world. Transformed by her journey, Alex returned to her world with a new understanding of love and connection. She began to apply the languages of love in her interactions, finding that each language had the power to deepen and enrich her relationships in unique ways. But the story doesn't end here. Alex's journey had sparked a change, a ripple that extended beyond her own life.